Welcome to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question. Come and get some answers. Learn a couple less from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax. Cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to Masters of the Nerdiverse, where we always have such sites to show you. This uh, Space Age emissary of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G, and with me, as always, is my cool also host with the most, Winter Trash Monk, the Thizzer. What's up, everybody? This is Winter. That is Trash Monk the Third. That's Trash Monk I I I. That's Trash Monk I I I. Ooh, the what was <laughs> it, the ASMR version. Yeah, I got something to tell you. What's that? <laughs> ah, get wrecked, everyone. Yeah. Here on this <laughs> get fo- wrecked, everyone. That was that was <laughs> such a that sounded like a dad or someone called me a Facebook dad today. That's no bueno, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Like you want to fight? Yeah. Dude, I was a I've never been a Facebook dad, but I've been a uh I've been a comic book store dad cuz one time we were uh, having a comic book conve- we we're having a comic book club and the, the, a bunch of guys walked by <laughs> the comic book store and did, and of course, in Revenge of the Nerds fashion, it was like, nerds! <laughs> <You know? laughs> Which I thought was hilarious, because you'd have to be a nerd to know that reference. Uh, so, yeah. You know, so a bunch of the uh, alpha males got up real fast and right outside to see who did it. Like, you guys aren't going to do anything. <laughs> right. Alpha males of a comic book. Club. Exactly, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the, oh, geez. They had their chest all pumped. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> Taking a shot of their inhaler. <laughs> One's popping insulin into the thigh. <laughs> you know, like, come on, yeah. come on, guys. Come on, goies. What are you going to do? Beat them up? But other than that happening yesterday, what was your day? <laughs> What's your week been like? Uh, because we live in the horrible yet beautiful United States of America, we had a a date to celebrate. Our colonizers, uh, which I happily took my day off. <laughs> colonizers, yeah, man. You know who you, you, they know who they are. Uh, so I had an extra long weekend where I did two things, and I just nothing and nothing and any- <laughs> and nada nada for favor. So I did two things I really want to talk about, and uh, one of those things I actually did with Winter which was super fun. I've just been thinking about it since we've done it. But the two things I uh, watched, I watched something and I played something. I'm trying to do that every week. Watch something, play something. Uh, just real quick, I'm still playing Apex. It's still fun. Uh, getting slowly, getting better, but not still getting carried, whatever. I watched a Netflix series that no one's really talking about, and it's a shame. And that is the Umbrella uh, Academy. I watched the Umbrella, Umbrella Academy. I marathoned it. I didn't think I was. But yeah, I watched it in one shot the entire first season. And it was quite amazing, actually. <laughs> a series created. Good, yeah. good. I, I'm, yeah. That's on my list to watch this weekend. It's really, really. It's not amazing. I'm not going to. It's, it's not like, oh my goodness, It's a, it was a religious experience or anything like that. Uh, But it was very, very, it took me by surprise because it's created by the guy, uh, by Gerald Way from My Chemical Romance fame. And and the artist, I believe his name is Gabriel Ba or something like that. And it's a comic I'd always known about, but I never paid much attention to. I just didn't didn't read it. I was reading Why the Last Man at the time. Sorry. So I went into this uh, series with no kind of, nerd knowledge i was just watching it as anybody else would watch something and the show is equal parts i would say uh pulp fiction 
in, I would say, not even nothing comic book like. It's like equal parts pulp fiction, equal parts like an Edgar Wright movie. You know what I mean? Interesting. Because uh, not to give too much away, I don't even want to go into the plot. Is Simon Pegg making a? No, I was surprised. Not the one thing, and the reason I give it Pulp Fiction is because the 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 show uses a lot of licensed music, kind of like this song is supposed to be how you feel kind of situation. You know what I mean? A very uh, I started a joke. <laughs> no, you know, it's like there's a there's a action scene where "Don't Stop Me Now" by Queen is playing. It, Stop, yeah. and it's all right. I'm not watching. <laughs> I'm not watching the show anytime soon. That's been played. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. one of those. It's that Next. kind of thing. Uh, Next, I I've seen parodies of Star Wars. Use that. Yeah, song. It's, it's there. <laughs> this this series has a lot of music. I know, which is kind of off putting. You know what I mean? But the series is really, really good. It okay. has very compelling stories. And this series has convinced me that I prefer my comic book, my live action comic book media in the long form TV series, Netflix version. I don't, I don't want it in movies anymore because if you put this yeah. series into a, into a two hour movie, it would not do any, any one justice. It's too layered. It's, it it has unbridled creativity, I would say. Almost, yeah. This is okay. So uh, winters, winters, uh, trash monk hot take, f- fresh, fresh trash. trash. Here we go. Why didn't they not use My Chemical Romance music for? There is the one show? song written by uh, Garrett Way, who does like the outro song, the last song of the series. And there's a song yeah. by Mary J. Blige who plays a role in the show. And she's good. She's really good. She Gosh. plays with a no spoilers, but she plays Gosh. a very important role, and she acts throughout every single <laughs> episode she's in. The series is very surprising. I was, I was. You're making me upset. It's very. Like... I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I can't front. It was a really. I cared about every character. The certain story arcs that I believed. Everyone acted their ass off. Uh, Ellen Page was amazing. In this show, as the white violin, uh, and it this show is very Dark Phoenix. I will say that it reminded me a lot of the Dark Phoenix saga. Um, and it just is very it had a very Dark Phoenix X Men, a very X Men vibe. It also reminded me of not the movies but the comics of Hellboy comics, the old school Hellboy comics. Uh, and it's just unbridled creativity, like. This guy has a vol- uh, active volcano for a head, and he talks through smoke sc- through smoke clouds and smoke screens and stuff like this. Crazy, crazy approaches to things, and I'm just like, okay, you're telling me to suspend to suspend disbelief. I'm all if you're doing that right off the bat, then I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? So I de- I give it a high recommend. Uh, just know that you're gonna have songs tell you how to feel, and that's probably my biggest gripe about it because I hate that. It's played, like you said, it's played. But uh, other than that, I absolutely was invested to the point where I'm thinking about buying a couple of the trade paperbacks and getting a bit deeper into it. Like, I want to know more about these characters and not have to wait until season two, if it even happens. Uh, The other thing, Winter, I'm sure you already know what I'm talking about, that we did, we played. Uh, We can wait till the end of your week. So did you do anything this week, Winter? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'll just announce the, uh, the news about one of my favorite things. So as many, of you know, I mentioned Funhouse a lot and two of the people who are hosts of Funhouse are Adam Kovic, who is, was known originally as the dead pixel, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, dude, and also Bruce Green and together they, they started, uh, I be I believe a couple of months ago doing their own thing of announcing or like talking about video game news. And it was kind of like what they used to do before for a thing mm-hmm. called inside gaming, which was part of machinima. And then of course we covered the news about machinima taking down all the old inside game yeah. mo- videos and they were like outraged, but then they were like, well, that's the nature mm-hmm. of the beast folks. Now fast forward to I believe Saturday or Friday where they announced that well Inside Gaming's back, they're back as hosts along with the people who were hosting it 
um, when they were gone. And they're so now they're doing both fun house as mm. well as inside gaming because now Machinima is under their uh, their same company that Rooster Teeth is under, and Rooster Teeth owns Fun House or like is, has Fun House in its uh, war chest. So looks like it. Uh, exciting, exciting stuff happening over at RT. Yeah, it sounds like everything kind of worked out. You know, <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, like, uh, right. somebody spilled the salad, but it fell directly back in the bowl perfectly. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they do not mince words. They do not like machinima. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I will say that for, if there, uh, at the language that Adam Kovic uses is something that would, to me, say, make it sound like he does not like machinima or their tactics. And um, he, I'm more power to them. I, I like the, I, I watch some of their videos, <laughs> inside gaming videos. Yeah, man, that's what's up. I'm happy to hear, kind of these phoenixes rising from the ashes of these situations. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna put this back together. Screw Machinima. We're under this right. new moniker. They're cool with it, and they want to pay us to do it. So yeah, yeah. put it back. Yeah. Get the band back together. Now, I don't know if we, yeah, I don't know if we can use the metaphor of a phoenix. I, I, I want to say that they, they, uh, they create something, and they go, oh, look, this is neat, and then they put it back on the shelf for whoever has money to then revive it again. So yeah, it, 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 in a sense, it is a phoenix. I mean, but, but it, the show was still going on without them. But it took this going coming under the heading of full screen media, I believe, um, which then owned Rooster Teeth and now Machinima right. or whatever. And now together they're like, oh, let's bring this back out and take a look at it again and see if that's we can what's get up. Any I'm happy that you know, even though I'm not, I, I'm not, I haven't listened to their content. Yeah. And this may spur me to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I just like hearing yeah. stories like that. Like, hey, we were we, we were out. You know? Yeah. It, it it's a yeah it's definitely showing of like new age new new media tactics where instead of like a show dying and you it never sees the light of day so to say there's always the potential of let's bring back this show <laughs> or let's yeah. bring back this I youtube mean, channel yeah if someone wants to pay for it if someone's gonna watch it yeah i think it netflix kind of spurred YouTube. that bringing back old stuff and like like re like refrying these beans as they as it were you know like you know like bringing back modern family right. uh, what was it uh full full ho- fuller house, full house. And, fuller what house. was it curb your enthusiasm had a revival on netflix it's like they have someone's going... well curb your enthusiasm isn't on netflix it's a uh, oh it's an amazon i, I said correctly uh, i thought who uh, netflix was working on yeah. that but that's cool. That's. I mean, they might. I don't. I don't know. But it's still an HBO thing. I mean, they just released a mm-hmm. season last year, I believe. Of I'm all Caribbean for revivals. Yeah, as long as it's. Kept... Yeah, and also one of the I main mean, guys yeah. died. <laughs> so. Yeah. And you stepped in it I now, in Mike. Anything. I I devour all knowledge for for this uh, particular content, but I'm happy that they've they found their footing. And they're getting the band back together. I always like a good get the band back together story. Yeah. Well, it's definitely it it's a it's a weird place because Funhouse, I mean, having one media thing to do, um, YouTube channel to help run is one thing. But now they have to do inside gaming as well. I'm still it's still relatively new mm-hmm. to see what the schedule is going to be like. That's good. Crazy is it's good. It's crazy. Crazy makes things happen, you know what I'm saying? So I'm all for that. Uh right. Anything else? You you do you does you do once. Yeah, yeah we man, did we do something on Sunday, didn't we? That was a night of feasting and sport to to which the likes you will never forget. No we didn't go to medieval times, but we might as well have. Uh, we played something that's going to be airing on the channel soon, which is MLTN plays Dungeons and Dragons. Where, where me, Mike G, I've never played a game of Dungeons and Dragons in my life, 
plays with uh, four seasoned vets, including Winter, who's DM'd before, who's DM'd multiple times, and a new campaign where uh, new new voices are going to be on the channel, and it's going to be fun and fancy for all. We'll have to see how it goes. Very excited. You know, what was your thoughts about it, Winter? Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's been a while since I, I've played myself. It's hard. It's, it's kind of easy. It's kind of like a pair of roller skates, just yeah. getting back in, the, in the thing. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I'm uh, happy to be on board. Uh, it, it was a, it was a fun game. Um, it's nice to have. We have a range oh, yeah, of yeah, ages. That was, I believe that kind of tripped me out actually. That one <laughs> of our it. guys has to be like maybe in his seventies, maybe his eighties. That's cool. That's super cool. That's super yeah. cool. I think that's cool. Yeah, and he and he's definitely yeah. taken all his knowledge of he's D&D super chill. And I like him. It, man. It he's real it's cool awesome. with it. So like like vet yeah. like seasoned D D and D legends we're playing with, dude. So it's like it's such a learning experience, and I'm like so gung ho, or so excited rather. Gung ho is not good, but. uh but just really excited to uh, kind of pursue it and see where it goes. You know what I mean? Playing with the with with the uh, masters of the D and D nerdiverse, as it were. You know what I mean? This was up. This right. was up. So you'll be hearing that to be dated. I'm thinking about pushing it up from what I'm thinking about um, debuting it, but I have to see. I have to see how the editing goes. So you'll be hearing it very shortly. Uh, my are good listeners yes 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 so barring that did you want to get into the news uh yes let's get on new news, news, to news, the news, news. News, news, news yes we're getting sued okay uh can't do that can't do that that's a no-no doing that tune unless you're ultra old like, like me, <laughs> I know where that tune is from. Yep. You will not be. You'll be in the in the legato t- danger. You know that legal field that flashes over your head where you're doing something you're not supposed to. You know. Have you ever had the legal field generate over your body, Winter? The legal field. You know, you're the about to do something field. illegal, and that 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 sensation of like breaking the law comes over you and you're like oh no you're a good boy no i've never broken I've, the law i've, I've good thought boy. about breaking the law but i've never done yeah. it i've been too scared i've never done it okay. god man i don't believe, I don't believe <laughs> me and my cousin were 14 people. once and we died and dashed out of a carols because we didn't have enough money that's about it that's the furthest time i've broken the yeah, law that's what i thought I heard a crazy. Okay, before we go on, this is a crazy yeah. story. I bought Girl Scout cookies today, and she wanted, and I went to grab them. She's like, "Pay first. and I asked, "Wow, okay." And then, well, I didn't ask. I the, that was my reaction. And then she told me about how someone like ordered fifty bucks worth of cookies, and then she gave Bastard. them to him, and she then they just the ran off way, without dude. paying for them. It's this cold, cold world. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and she's like, "If I ever meet that Mike dude, <laughs> just imagine again. me in like a bed of cookies, laughing and eating at the same time. Just ha 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 ha. It just cookies pouring out of my mouth. Okay, super ultra important yeah. question: What kind did you buy? And yes, there is a wrong answer. Uh, <sighs> I bought Samoa Joes. Or as you Philistines might call, uh, uh, okay, um, car- caramel delights, caramel delights, uh, and then I bought thanks a lot uh, cookies and okay, uh, okay. one box of cinnamon, okay. which I don't remember ordering, so you're but like I paid anyways, thirty percent. I don't like good on your de- on your cookie decisions there. I'll stand by it. <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll stand by know. it. You should have added some tagalogs in there, but hey, none of us are perfect. All of our uh, not I'm not into that. those new the cookies. Feature, it's tagalogs in like cold fusion, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it's the first <laughs> step towards Babylon. <laughs> tag, to tag along to go to Babylon. <laughs> you gotta say it like that. All right, <laughs> you're getting you're getting all of uh, all the uh, Marley with siblings. Yeah, man. Tag along that to could Babylon. be another Ray, Ray Gay song. <laughs> tag along, tag along to Babylon. To Babylon. <laughs> <laughs> Out on the they streets, call they call it hustling. Cookies. Uh, yeah, we okay, got, we got a life to live. I got other stuff to do. I don't let's want do this. To wait in vain for my cookies. Yeah. Shut up. The news. Uh, want to talk about something that is dumb and it, it is a rumor, but may be true. Okay, I needed your confirmation before moving forward. Okay. Uh, so let's pre-reference this by saying it's a rumor, and it's probably a high percentage rumor because normally I don't like going into rumors on this channel. I'm not a big fan of it, but this rumor just perked my ears hard enough to where I, I'm not a big fan of it. I I said no uh-huh. salt, uh, and apparently. The Xbox Live exclusive that was killed on Dead on Arrival, Platinum Games' own Scalebound is making a revival, funny enough, on n- the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? Right. Interesting, by the way, that you bring up this article because it's Alana Pierce who mentions uh, that Scalebound will still come out just not as an Xbox exclusive. Alana Pierce, original former IGN editor, now editor of review movies, small as well world, as other isn't videos it? for Funhouse <laughs> and Inside small. Gaming. Sadly, it is. So, Sadly, I know, it is. Right? Hopefully, we need us. more people. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> Sigh, I'm your teeth, please. I'm so tired. I'm broke. <laughs> I can't take any more. Uh, that was weird. Uh, so, Scalebound was a game that was going to be uh, a Xbox One exclusive, actually, way back in the day. It was made by Platinum Games. It was supposed to be like a multiplayer Devil May Cry kind of thing, and unceremoniously was just killed. Like we're not doing it, and it was almost completed. Apparently, it was like on like eighty percent done or something like something that's like that, and it was just shelved in the Microsoft vaults, apparently for all eternity, and. Rumor is is that this Nintendo is going to bring it back for the Switch. Yet another reason to own a Nintendo Switch is to play this. Uh, probably Res Res Dowd. Uh, probably seven twenty p thirty frames per second version of this game. That was probably going to look insane on the Xbox, but hey, I'll take it in any version. I don't care. Or. We don't, and we move on. <laughs> I'm gonna play Get, just it. to make uh, a scale bound too. Just to make a scale bound too. <laughs> just stack like the first one already came out. Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? That'd be dope. Like this is Blood Axe Three. Like when was one and two? Well, <laughs> Blood we'll Axe Three. We'll think about that for a second. So you have scale bound, which they're they're probably just gonna try to make a high def version. And uh, got a bing. The game, so the game is going to be whatever it was going to be beforehand, only slightly like crummy version of trying to make it look good. But if you tag that along with going, hey, here's scale bound two, or <laughs> name it something else like fish, like uh, scale ascent, or whatever you want to call yeah, I was, it. I was thinking the same thing, scale yeah, bound ascension, and, and then have like attached to it this original scale bound and sell it for 70 bucks. Bada bing, baby. That's how you make that. People would gobble that up. Like, two games for the price of one? <laughs> that's, what they're doing with, that's what they're doing with Bayonetta. It's like Bayonetta 3 is coming out, but also Bayonetta 1 and 2 are also coming out, like bundled with it. It's like, dude, that's a yeah. steal, my That's a steal, my dude. Yes. So, more Nintendo news because the Nintendo Direct uh, happened this weekend or this past week. And it's a lot of news. I was ready. You know, Reggie's good, man. Reggie always Reggie looks like Watts. <laughs> Not Reggie Watts. He's good too, actually. He's probably killing some chili cheese fries right now. But they said my name. 
<laughs> he starts beatboxing with Rozelle. Yeah. Okay, what do you guys know about Rozelle? Shut up. No one knows anything no one about knows. No one knows anything about <laughs> Rozelle. You're Make on your own music. there, Chief. I'll fight you. Oh, man. Rozelle you can fight best. me, but that will actually make me not remember even more. I know. Knock <laughs> <Rozelle. laughs> it further out of my brain. Even you mentioning it will be gone. So Nintendo Switch is just trying to be the best Nintendo console ever. It's what they're doing. Because these maniacs have decided to completely remake a Nintendo classic, which is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, which was a Game Boy exclusive <laughs> way right. back in the day. And these madmen decided to just remake the whole game and make it a Switch exclusive. And this is one of those games where people like grew up on it. Like there's there's Mario guys, there's Sonic people, there's Mega Man guys, and then there's like Link's Awakening people who just eat who eat it up. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, that's just so smart. You know, a game that's never been re- remastered or, or released again is now. Uh, being brought back in in this remade, not not a remaster. Like they built the whole thing from the ground up and kept it in this isometric kind of two D, but also kind of updated graphics. It's it's just it's just smart, you know. And it's like just another. I keep saying it on this show. It's another reason to own a Nintendo Switch. And it's just one of those. It's shaping up to be one of the best systems since the Super, in my opinion. This thing is getting kind of insane. Did you play? Did you happen to play yeah, this game? Yeah, I still don't know. No, I did not play this game. Uh, <laughs> no problemo, poor from no problemo, senor. I was busy playing Tetris. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to bing, that. Bing, 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 bing. Okay. Yeah, man. Also, uh, during the Nintendo Switch, the things that I want to talk about is also the sick character action game called astral chain coming out on the switch okay i'm wor- i'm worried for you mike that you use the term sick it's sick <laughs> for this game it's super sick dude you're you're a jojo character so- i should not be surprised because you seem to be interested in the <laughs> devil may cry series you guys are not what that game comes out i may just have to skip a podcast week <laughs> just because i'm gonna be so engulfed if I'm noticing a theme here I in like, games hey, that you like. Is, I like what I like, man. Don't don't, don't, yeah. don't shame me, bro. I like what I yeah, like. Games that look like they could cause you to have a seizure. Hey, man. The battles get real. If you want your hand-eye coordination to be at S tier, you have to play these games. You got to be on point. Your eyes got to be shifty. You got to have shifty eyes to play these games, dude. So Astro Chain, you're playing as cops with stands. If you know what a stand is, it's from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. And there's a pupper. There's a robo dog that looks super sick. It runs around and does dog combos. Come on, man. Whatever. I'm listening. Whatever. I'm listening. It's going to be awesome. It's Astro Chain, made by Platinum Games. There's a robo <laughs> Yeah, you can, I keep saying you it. can say the I name. I keep saying Astro Chain. It's so real, dude. Astro Chain, dude. With a pupper with like a Robocop visor. The pup is like a Robocop dog. Is like, that's your companion. And it does combos. <laughs> that just says Mike G. That's me. Yes, the only the- way I would have played this game if they did Astral Chains by music with music by Allison Chains. <laughs> if you could resurrect <laughs> the homunculus, which is Allison Chains, to make a video game soundtrack, I'm all for it. I'm for it. Uh, pain wow <laughs> speaking of pain want to talk about this netflix drop that that is surprised to no one right. surprised six people on earth apparently the punisher and jessica jones got canceled at the same time by netflix just get them out of here Get hype. <laughs> it's, All right. the dream is over now. It's, it's finished Five years later. Five years later. Punisher on the Walt Disney streaming service right. has come back. At first, I was like, okay, this is just Disney calling their kids home from from playing outside, right? All right, the street lights on, everybody come home. you know. But I'm hearing that it, it's because Netflix is salty because Disney's making the Disney Plus streaming service, and they don't want to feed their competition. Because before, because right. before this Disney was not their competition, they didn't care. Like, hey, let's do it, but we're not going to market your brand on our station, knowing that you already have your own 
identical uh, an identical product. So it makes sense on a business level, and it's kind of sad because you know these characters aren't gone forever. They're popular characters now. Luke Cage is a household name. You know, like okay, okay, let's, it let's, is. Let's not get carried away. He here. broke the internet. You can't deny that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a household, okay, a household name would yeah. mean that I can go to um, a mammy jammy forty year old woman. Yeah, yeah she'll know. <laughs> going, do you know who Luke Cage is? And then they're going, when was that in movie theater? Nah, she'll be, she'll say, "Sweet Christmas" and dab on you, and then you know she's in effect. But they're good <laughs> enough known names. They made, they they were getting very good mm-hmm. ratings, and uh, okay. Punisher and Jessica Jones are officially done. The sad thing is, is that all these characters are probably going to be recasts like 10 years down the road. And that kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Because the actors who are playing these roles were very dedicated to those roles, especially the guy who played Daredevil. He was legit broken up by it. Like, man, it sucks. I, like, I oh, I wasn't ready to stop. <laughs> like, it's too soon. But I, I'm more than happy that these guys are leaving Netflix because... Netflix is, I have a feeling Netflix is kind of drawing at straws now. The blood's in the water. <laughs> Everyone's kind of just doing their thing. Good grief. <laughs> the blood's <laughs> in the water, dude. Netflix is, everyone is abandoning ship, dude. Yeah. We need to have a soundboard for all yeah. these hot takes that's coming out of I'm our mouths. <laughs> I give it, I give Netflix, I give Netflix Are- five, ten years, dude. Oh, legit. No. Legit. Legit. Mike. Mike, (laughs) people are going to start divvying up their money elsewhere. I hope out of the this, the words coming out of the ironic artist right now are just being ironic. I'm being, I'm being deadpan serious. You got to think about it like like ten years. years, Netflix will be a Netflix will be like, oh, you remember Napster? It's going to be like that. Oh my! I'm I'm just call, call me crazy. I'm just calling it like. There's too many of these companies that have that, that are loading out their properties to Netflix, where they're going to get the bright idea like let's just pull it and do our own thing. Warner Brothers is going to have its own channel at some point. Disney already has their own channel, you know what I'm saying, which is going to have Fox and a ton of different crazy stuff. Columbia is going to do it. New yeah. Line, everyone's going to start doing it, and it's going to be like, oh yeah, pay twenty bucks a month to watch Orange Is the New Black. People will do it, but it's not going to be the the juggernaut it is now. It's not Amazon. There's no Amazon killer out there. You know what I mean? Amazon is infinite because there's no there's no uh, challenging market. <laughs> Netflix is getting. I I don't know. I don't know. I man. think Netflix has a better chance of buying out uh, or doing a feature, which they. I, I think. Th- I think this is what you should be hoping for. For at least for a more realistic. Future, I'm not say that. that's the writing's on the wall. Yeah, of net of Netflix being still around, but for for an extra two dollars a month, you can get the CBS package. On oh, you think it's going to start doing a part and parcel like that for for the for the yeah. companies who aren't big enough to have their own channel, their own like because because CBS has its but, but yeah. CB, CBS has its own channel saying. now, and it's like. They're putting all their eggs in their basket, thinking that people are going to watch want to watch Star Trek and Twilight Zone. On and it. people are going to do it because that's where the quote unquote money <laughs> is, and and everyone's like stepping up to Netflix, pulling their toys back until Netflix is not going to have anything else to uh, produce but their own content. But you see, yeah. they're pumping out like crazy. They're spending millions of dollars pumping out their own content because right. everyone. Well, you'll have to ask where the money. Well, it's hard to say where the money is. Uh, to be honest, yeah. for me, because the numbers are always going to be fudged by the in people. Charge. Yeah, you never going to know. For instance, Netflix is going to say that we made this amount of money, or like they, it, it's hard. I don't yeah. know. Um, I mean, it's certainly ad space on these things as well, but that that can only take you so far, particularly when we're in a market that wants an increase in revenue exactly. each year or each quarter, really. You know, um, it's. I'm sorry, I got distracted by Banana Splits revived as a horror movie. I'm done. With All right, the we're moving internet. on. That, that's a good place <laughs> to stop. Speaking of things that makes you want to quit, uh, apparently uh, Ben Affleck was recently on, I think, Jimmy Kimmel, and he publicly announced that he's no longer playing Batman. He publicly, in front of a camera, 
<laughs> like on national on live TV was right. like, yeah, I'm done, and I I, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> like what? Good, Good for, for him, him man. Good for him. I mean, like his approach is a bit garish, I think. But it's yeah. Let's get Wyatt Russell in here and let him. Wyatt play Russell Batman. killing his Batman. But I think yeah. I think there's nothing more absolute than that, and that's fine. And I think Ben Affleck never really got a shake as a superhero actor. And that sucks because he had the look, he had the build, but uh, I don't know. And he wasn't, a, in my opinion, he wasn't a bad Batman. He wasn't a bad Bruce Wayne. It just, he didn't get what he wanted. He didn't get what he was promised. And DC honestly doesn't know what the hell they're doing right now. It is not his fault. <laughs> you know, it's really, he had a really rough deal with that whole thing. Because I could, I could promise you, his agent was like, "Look, you're going to be in two of these movies. You just do it. Then you're going to be able to direct your own Batman movie. They're going to let you direct it, and you're going to be you're going to direct yourself. It's going right. to town. You're going to be you're going to make an Oscar winning Batman movie because you're that good. Because the town was yeah, because so the town was like the best thing he's ever done. And he was like, yeah. And then <laughs> and then Zack Snyder just. How oh, did that? The <laughs> cash me outside. How about dead? And then. We saw the DCEU implode into itself with all that drama, and he just and he got and he couldn't handle the memes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. I think that's a, a big part about reserving yourself to be in these roles. It's like if, if for any cultural phenomena, like if you're going to be in a Star Wars movie, if you're going to be in a Marvel movie, a DC movie, even a Fast and Furious movie. You have to be impervious to the memes. You can't let the fans get to you because <laughs> they're crazy and they're ravenous and they're and they're inventive. You know. Yeah. Just tell him to stop what he's doing. Make a Goodwill Hunting too. Goodwill wow. still hunting. And uh, oh, there you geez. go. Well, would you? Would I didn't you watch, watch Goodwill Hunting one? So, no, oh, I was too geez. busy. And you're telling me that Netflix is going to be <laughs> okay. I'm going to know. I'm going to know the uh, the Goodwill Hunting parties where everyone just sits around and watches it, and eats eats pizza. I want to know those parties. All right, we got. Uh, we don't eat you pizza. We drink wine and have uh, wow. tapas. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, of hippie picks, let's talk about Jade being in Mortal Kombat 11. <laughs> That's the most that's the most okay. character okay. Cho- choice in video in in fighting games because uh, she's such a niche character that people have been screaming about for years. <laughs> Jade is uh, one of the princess clones because there's there's different kinds of clones in Mortal Kombat. There's the ninjas, which are the Rainbow Ninjas, which is Sub Zero, Scorpion, Nobsabot, Purple Rain, which is based off Prince, uh, Ermac, a Reptile, whatever. But then there's the princesses, which is based off Katana, Melina, Scarlet, and Jade. I think those are the four. And Jade is kind of the unsung hero out of the three. Maybe Scarlet would be four, but Jade is kind of like one of the lesser known characters. She she didn't make it to Mortal Kombat X, which was Mortal Kombat 10, for those who don't know the Roman numerals. And fans literally were livid. They were like, where's, where's my Jade? Because everybody has their maid, you know? It's like... yeah. You know, it is fine because I didn't play Street Fighter Five because Blanca wasn't in it, and he's like such a hipster pick too. So I'm not throwing stones in a glass house, but <laughs> I'm trying not to at least as my foot jams right. into my throat. Uh, <laughs> but Jade looks good. Everything about this game looks good. It's smooth. The animations are ridiculously sharp. I just want to play it. I can't wait till it's purchasable so I can save up some money and play it. But Jade looks good. Jade looks super good. Do you have anything to uh, to uh, add to this conversation, Winta? Uh, no, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> I do want to. Add, I want to spend a, the time that we would have talked about Jade on uh, this comic because uh, this ne- this next news clip because I I want you to explain to me what going is, on here. Um, the What's stab- going on here? What? The savage, okay. like so. 
I, I read here, uh, is there like a timeline in the comic book world that has no, Savage in it? it's, okay, this is, okay, we're going to fall down a very small Marvel okay. bleach hole, if that's okay. I'll try to keep it to five minutes, okay? Marvel <laughs> in the 2000s went okay. through a phase where it was Adjective Avengers, right? It was the Mighty Avengers, and that was his own crew of different heroes. There was the Dark Avengers, where it was all the evil versions of Avengers. And then there was, of course, the uh, the the secret Avengers. And there was this whole group. So they kept making making reasons. Yeah. Because Avengers made a billion dollars, they were flooding the market with Avengers comics that made no sense. Like the, like the Revengers and, and the Defenders and all that crazy stuff, right? So this is a new comic called the Savage Avengers. And the reason I bring up this this one because I don't yeah. get to talk about comics that often on this channel, like legit, like comic books. But this lineup is so stupid that I love it. That for somehow Conan the Barbarian is going to be in a modern time Avengers group with Wolverine and Venom <laughs> and, and like Elektra, Conan the Sumerian, like from like the. And who's Brother, Brother Voodoo? Voodoo. <laughs> that no, Baron Salmon? That's thinking of Baron Mordo. That's a, that's a different magical magical Negro, as they say. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but uh, Brother Voodoo is a 70s hero who's kind of like a magician like Doctor Strange, but except for using like the mystic arts he uses, like, like, vo- like Voodoo and, and like you know, the African-American magics. <laughs> if they're what, it's hard to explain. <laughs> But he's a powerful dude as well. He's, he's He was a Sorcerer Supreme at one point when Doctor Strange was dead in the comics, quote-unquote. Uh, and he's a good guy. He's pretty good. He is, his brother haunts him from the grave but gives him like advice and fighting and stuff. Brother Voodoo's cool. And... I'm just saying that the the writer, uh, Michael uh, Savage... Ben, no, uh, Fred Savage. <laughs> the series will be written by Jerry... <laughs> by Jerry Duggan, and he had, and they list like another comic book they read, wrote called the Savage yeah, Sword of Conan. So, <laughs> does he just have a theme of like adding he Savage might, to the? Because that's a very everything? big coincidence. Because he wrote, apparently, he wrote Conan, which Conan is not in the Marvel. Conan's in the Marvel universe, but he's not in the Marvel universe. He's not fighting freaking Doctor Doom on, you know, on the Brooklyn Bridge. Conan. <laughs> Is eating a rack of lamb in the in the in the in BC, getting chased by a dinosaur. That's Conan riding a a, a, a saber toothed tiger, and you can always tell. And I always and I do this every single time it happens. You know who Marvel is pushing in their movies based upon who they're giving shine to in their comics. It's like clockwork, like. Know why you didn't see the X Men or Fantastic Four for years? Because they didn't own the rights, <laughs> and they didn't, want, they didn't want to advertise them. But you saw the Inhumans, <laughs> you know. What I mean? You saw the Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what I mean? You, you know these these C tier kind of groups who who got big, who did, they wanted to push. You know, so now I will make another uh, crystal ball prediction that you're probably going to see a Conan the Barbarian movie in the next 10 years. Marvel's Conan the Barbarian. Played by Wyatt Russell. <laughs> Who is Wyatt Russell, Dad? Uh, <laughs> Just tell he, me. He's uh, me. Kurt Russell's son that it made it is now in movies. Like he was in... Ah, uh, he was... Yeah, he was in a recent one, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, Overlord... Uh, yeah, I need to watch Overlord. I heard Overlord was super yeah. good. He, the fact that I he watched was in that the tonight. movie Goon Two, uh, the Gooning, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay, no, I don't know if it's the Gooning, but it, it's uh, yeah, he was a he's a hockey he was the ex hockey player, college hockey player too. Yeah, he, he check wow. him out, guys. Wyatt Russell, he's gonna be here for a while. He, he's probably gonna go he's through gonna a phase play. of terrible action movies, and then he's gonna make Conan. <laughs> Nah, he's gonna be cast as Wolverine. Hundred bucks. He's gonna be cast as the Wolverine, as the Wolverine, Logan. 
Real quick news I don't care about. Uh, Jared, Le- Jared Leto is no longer playing the Joker. He announced it. <laughs> On the earth. <laughs> That's so sad. Like, I, I, all I think about what makes this so funny is that these actors being being gamed up by their agents. Like, look, man, you're going to be the Joker. You're going to do it your own way. You're going to be like in 10 movies. You're going to make a billion dollars. You understand? You're going to be, you're going to be this generation's Joker. You're, you're going to be the Joker. And Jared Little's like, yeah. <laughs> then the whole thing just explodes. <laughs> like the whole thing. That's nutty to me. Like, how did you mess that up so much? Not him. He did what he, what he thought he had to do. But Water Brothers, how did you mess this up so badly? It's insane, dude. Yep. It's insane. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, man. But they hurt him real, real bad. So the last thing I want to talk about, the last bit of news is another Nintendo Direct announcement, which is kind of the coolest thing of the week to me. And that is Tetris 99. Have Tetris you seen anything about 99. the Twitter? Yeah. One step beyond. Do, do, do. Yeah. So, I'm not a big fan of Battle Royale games. That's been known. I don't play a lot of them. I'm not a Fortniter. I didn't play Pub- the PUBG. I do like uh, Apex Legends, but I just I just started getting into that. But what did Nintendo and Tetris do? They said, we're going to make our own Battle Royale. But for Tetris. And... Tetris 99. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the most insane thing, but it, it's so smart. Tetris 99 is a free game. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, except the, all you have to do is uh, accept your time. And all you have to do is be like a subscriber to their uh to their online play, you know, like Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus or whatever. Uh-huh. And how it goes is that you're in a group of a hundred different Tetris players and everyone is playing to be the final person who survives last. And everyone's attacking each other by playing strategically. And it's a big, crazy co- like, like microcosm of awesomeness and, and organized confusion. And it's so, it looks like, it looks like so much fun to play. And, you know, it is so much, and I was just watching, I've been watching hours of it because I'm just fascinated by it. And there's so much strategy to it. It it has all the, it hits all the right spots of a battle royale, but it, it is completely different context. Have you been able to check this game out, Winter? Uh, yeah, I watched a little bit of, of it. Um, I like the idea of it. The only downside, I don't like how people can uh, mess up your screen while you're playing or like you can mess with people's game. I think if they just left Tetris on its own, it's able to sell. Um, I hear you, but at the same time, those games will last forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you could, so there has I, to be some, right. I, w- I would say that you could, you should mess with the, the time then. And if, if worrying about it being forever is an issue, have it speed up to where, it's the levels are arrived a lot quicker. I can hear, I see that, yeah. but I do like, I do, but me personally, I do like something about, you know, there is a defense and offense uh, meta well, that's in the because, game. That's because, and that's why we never speak to each other outside of the podcast. <laughs> no, at all. Cause we're, we're such, we're such different creatures. Yeah. Me and winter. We don't like each other outside of the <laughs> We don't, we don't make eye contact. We don't shake hands. Nope. This is strictly business, ladies and gentlemen. But no, like, well, you know, winter yeah. is awesome, by the way. Anyway, I like the idea <laughs> of there have, been peop- there have been people who have been these Tetris gods for almost 40 years now. Like people who just quietly play their Tetris to themselves and are amazing at it, right? Yeah. Like gr- mothers, probably some grandmothers, grandfathers. Just quietly playing their Tetris, like no, 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 not not bothering anyone. But now, in this new setting, they're the gods. <laughs> like there's a hundred people, there's five people who've been playing Tetris for like thirty years and know what they're doing. And like, you know, the best Nana ninety five is like is a killer. <laughs> you, know? Like, 
you know, soccer mom ninety like soccer mom ult- ultimate <laughs> just just bodied you in Tetris, dude. Like I think that's so fascinating. <laughs> like these these low key Tetris deities. Who's like, oh I'm just gonna play my Tetris on my Game Boy. No, no, Nana, check this out. And like your grandmother just gets first place. Or your mom, or your friend. A totally non combative game in the history of the game. And now they just put you just dropped this nu- nuclear bomb amongst children and people who th- quote unquote think they're good at the game. A, a term I like to I've coined from another podcast called Basement Kings. You know, the people who think they're great and then are put against, you know, <laughs> the cross dad night, the cross dad seventy four or something. Right. He just he just wrecks you. <laughs> He's not trying to. He's just playing his game. You know, but you weren't ready <laughs> for for those killers. You know, I just think that's really cool, and it opens up the possibility to what a battle royale game could be. You know what I mean? It's like if Tetris could do it, anything could do it. Anything. You know, yeah, anything. You know, that's the most abstract that you like. I would never put those two thought processes is together. You could have battle royale. Sports games. I mean, there are technically racing games are a form of battle royale. Everybody starts at the same time, and there's only one winner. But what if you put like a hundred people on a racetrack? Jeez, out of control, right? I mean, and it's like battle royale. uh, Battle royale is a legit genre, like RPG, sports, fighting, adventure. You know, strat- uh, you know, real time strategy. <laughs> like, right. it's, it's just own. That's the way people need to see it nowadays. I mean, I know there there are games out there that are adding as a mode right now, but that's not the the norm. That's the not norm the... is battle royales are their separate game now. Yeah, um, they're to be respected, man. They're not a fad. You know, this thing is real. You know, like and. I I was the first one to say, oh, this will be done. It's just Fortnite players. But no, yeah. these these game companies are getting really creative with how they approach the Battle Royale formula. And Apex Legends is a beautifully done Battle Royale game. And Tetris 99 is a creative way to approach it. And I'm sure this blew the minds of so many developers. Like, what? <laughs> you know, like, right. Okay, let's... let's okay, what, what dead... Uh, intellectual properties that we have that we could turn into a BR. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's gonna like can you imagine Bobber Man uh, like Battle Royale? You know what I mean? Like, like a giant grid with like a hundred Bombermen and everybody's Well like, what I'm waiting for is Red Dead Redemption 2, where they mention that actually that they're doing a battle royale for that. What is, I, I believe we Yeah, d- d- that hasn't come out? I don't think so. Oh man, that's. But you know what? Uh, didn't their multiplayer come out like a year after the game? Uh, the multiplayer for yeah. Grand Theft Auto. So they're probably just being quiet about it. They're waiting for the. Because honestly, I wasn't a fan of Red Dead Redemption Two. Like, it was too boring to me. Easy there, big fella. I'm just saying, it didn't make my top. It didn't make my top <laughs> video games. I'll say that. And I got heads on for it for a bit. It just was too too much like work. On the, yeah. <laughs> too much like work. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah. Need the clock in to play that game. But a battle royale in that world where you don't have to worry about feeding your horse and, and brushing your hair and making sure that your your little camp is fine and like you can just go and shoot the bang guns in the Wild West. That may be a bit more brain dead and more fun in my opinion but yeah you know battle royales they're here to stay they're making way too much money and people are already starting to reinvent the wheel when it comes to them and i'm just excited i'm actually excited to see the different approaches that are going to be coming down the pipe like a like i'm just mentally trying to figure out like a fighting game battle royale or a wrestling game battle royale you know, like how do you? How would you do that? And what servers on this planet can support that? And what graphical fidelity can be maintained? You know, like can you imagine like PlayStation Five and Xbox Scarlet? Every game comes with its own battle royale version. 
that would be kind of, yeah it'd be kind of overkill but i wouldn't put it past them you know like death strand because of battle royale <laughs> what would that be uh uh i joke but uh the last of us could easily have a battle royale built into it they'll never do it but you put like 20 people on a map, mix some clickers into it. You know what I mean? The circle closes, <laughs> survive. Yeah. You know, either you just survive and, and just worry about the clickers or you got to worry about the clickers and other people try to eliminate you. It'd be easy to do that. You know, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to think of, <laughs> about that. That's, that's <laughs> a scary future, man. That's a scary future that we're, uh, yeah. That we're facing. Yeah. Uh looking forward to anything? I'm looking forward to uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> nothing really. I mean, I'm excited for next month when it's the battle pass for Apex comes out and that's gonna be a whole new group of people coming in and yeah. hopefully I can get some wins. Hell yeah, man. That's what's up, man. Uh I'm excited to draw more versions of my created character in D and D. Because I'm drawing like seven versions of them. I'm kind of yeah. I'm kind of low key obsessed with it. Uh, I'm also excited for more Apex Legends. I can't even think about a battle pass until I unlock the two hidden characters. That's kind of like <laughs> where my head's at right now. I want to play enough games to where I can unlock uh, Barrage and the Caustic Dude. That's kind of where my head's at. I can think about, oh, oh. yeah. I can. I, I I've thought about the next this thing here. So if you um if you play Rocket League, they're coming out with an update where it's no longer just crossplay, um, meaning that PC players can play with PS4 players, but now and like Xbox and uh, I believe Nintendo Switch now as well, you can now be on the same team. Like you can be in the what? same party. That's, That's what they're cool. going. Oh, really? Yeah. So you need to get uh, Rocket League, my dude. Is that game hard? It looks hard. It is hard. It has a steep learning curve, I would say. It looks... But yeah, um, if you have, if you, you just, it, it requires. I'd rather have someone who can have better teamwork. Uh, than play with pubs, uh, uh, yeah. Who or who? I yeah. It's mostly about teamwork. That's pretty much is, about it. Not, not, not. I would say aerials are farther in the future than people realize. But having communication of I'm going for it or knowing when not to go for it is key. The, is a ticket. Is it free? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> is, it, is it sixty bucks? It's like twenty bucks, probably. Okay, that's not bad. Let me. I'll think about it. You yeah. know, I'm. I'm kind of my my plate's kind of full right now. With next month being Devil May Cry and yeah, you can just get it next week. It's fine. I, it's fine. Get it now. It's no <laughs> big deal. Do it. Uh, but yeah, uh, nothing to watch. I watched all I wanted to watch. So unless something pops up, uh, but my schedules. I need to watch Incredibles two for reasons. So t- you'll hear about that more about that later. And yeah, uh, do you have any closing thoughts? Before uh, do you have any thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Um, yeah, everybody, uh, just keep on the lookout for, uh, stuff I post online on Trash Monk III, that's Trash Monk III, that's Winter, and I will, uh, be always online. Feel free to message me if you have any questions. We're always online, you understand? Who <laughs> got him? We're like, okay, first of all, your homework th- this, uh, week fellow masters is to watch the movie as extends and understand that we're on, we're constantly online. If that's on Twitter at at M nerdiverse, where we're always floating around the Twitter dance hall. If that's on SoundCloud, we're always floating around there. If you're on line at like three o'clock in the morning, there's a, there's a M nerdiverse cat. Like, what are you buying? And he opens his coat with a bunch of podcasts in it. You know, that's for you. And if you like this content and want to support that weird, creepy dude in the corner with podcasts in his coat, you can give him a dollar at his Patreon, 
which is mastersthenerdiversecast.com, uh, where with the humble uh, submission of $1 a month, you can definitely help this podcast grow like one of the monsters from OG Power Rangers, Gen 1. And if you want to support us non-monetarily, you can always like our our posted content. May that be on Twitter. May that be on uh, iTunes. You can leave a comment, leave a review. Please review us. I I humbly ask for you to give us a review, good or bad. Let us know how we're doing so we can fine-tune this thing and make it better. And, of course, you can subscribe to make sure that you're getting our latest content. I've, of course, been your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Winter. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond. Beyond.